Welcome to Familypreneur, the podcast for parent entrepreneurs raising kidpreneurs. It's time for your weekly dose of inspiration and actionable tips to build your business and find better balance, all while strengthening your family. And now we'd like to introduce your host. She's my mom and the bomb.com, Meg Meg Brunson. Hey there, you are listening to episode number 113 of the Familypreneur podcast. I want to preface this episode with the fact that I'm going to be discussing some sensitive topics. So this is a family-friendly podcast, and it's really my intent to keep it that way. However, this week, my reflection is uh, surrounding the discussions, the fear, the reality of the situation that's going on in Alabama and Georgia. And it does relate to abortion and the termination of pregnancy. So I just want to give a disclaimer at this time that if that's not a topic that everybody who is listening to this show should be introduced to, it may be a good idea to just skip over this episode. Maybe you'll want to come back and listen to it at another time, or maybe you just stick to some other content. So I appreciate your um, understanding. I want to take a minute and just thank you for spending time with me today. I know there are a ton of podcasts you could be listening to, and I appreciate you spending a little bit of time to listen to this one. If you are a longtime listener or a brand new listener, either way, I welcome you. I hope that you will hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so that you get um, alerts of our upcoming episodes, and that if you enjoy this podcast, I would love for you to leave a positive review for us on iTunes or whatever platform you're listening to your podcasts on. Just a quick recap of how we run things around here. On Mondays, we talk about marketing. Wednesdays are our midweek mastermind where we interview a parent or a child entrepreneur about how they're redefining balance. And on Fridays, it's my day for personal reflection. So sometimes it is an entrepreneurial or a marketing-related concept. Sometimes it's more of a personal or family-related concept as it is today. I kind of think it's timely, all of these things that are happening in Georgia and in Alabama, specifically Alabama got the most reach this past week, because I also happen to be about halfway through a really, really applicable book. And that book is called, I Think You're Wrong, But I'm Listening. It's a guide to grace-filled political conversations, and it's by fellow podcasters Beth A. Silvers and Sarah Stewart Holland. So if this is a topic, I don't know, I really feel like this is a book that everybody needs to read right now. Everybody. Because we are in such a politically charged climate, and it's easy to get caught in the mudslinging. I mean, I'm going to be real honest here. It's happened to me, right? Where you pass judgment without really knowing the full story. It's so easy to just categorize people based on Democrat or Republican and then assume that you know their stance on every single issue based on those party lines. And what this book does is goes through and kind of dispels that myth. So you can be a Democrat and still support some Republican values or be a Republican and still be compassionate towards some Democratic values and and vice versa. And it's about really listening to everybody who's involved, right? Like just listening and attempting to understand where that person is coming from on a a level of humanity. So even though you disagree with them, you're listening, you're hearing them out, and you're trying to just understand where they're coming from. And in most cases, it's not black and white, right? Right. In most cases, that's how it is. And the book has been really eye-opening for me. I'm not done with it, so I have to say that too. Like Maybe I'm going to get some even better insight in the second half, but I do really enjoy it. One of the authors is a Democrat. One of the authors is a Republican. So you've got that liberal versus conservative dynamic in the discussion. Um, And it's just really interesting to see how they come to some forms of compromise within this book. So I highly recommend that you give that book a read. I think you're wrong, but I'm listening. 
And it's also on Audible. So I'm a huge fan, obviously, of audio content and consuming content that way. I did buy the audio book. So sometimes I say I'm reading it. I'm really listening to it. But I think it's kind of one and the same. And I highly encourage you to give that book a listen. So with that in mind, I do want to talk about the events that are happening in Alabama. So if you haven't been paying attention, just... um, kind of a a brief summary, is that this week Alabama passed some abortion laws that are really the most strict in the nation, and it criminalizes um, any any abortions, including, you know, rape, incest, it doesn't really matter. It just criminalizes abortions in general. Now, there is a, as I understand it, I should also say here, um, I'm not like a political scientist. I'm not in politics. I'm I'm a person who's reading the news and, and taking in this information. But I just wanted to share really not so much my breakdown of the of the law, but my fear um, as a woman, as a person, my situation, my experiences, and how that plays into um, what's going on in our country. Because I'm hoping that as people share not just that I think this is right or I think this is wrong, but as people share their experiences and the reasoning behind their feelings, I'm hoping that we'll be able to have some conversations and come to some understandings, right? Some some compromises, if you will. So here we go. My story, I have had five pregnancies. So I had four pregnancies that resulted in healthy baby girls, and I had one pregnancy that resulted in a miscarriage. Now, when I had that miscarriage, I feel like the biggest, I don't know, shock to me was the fact that the medical diagnosis of the miscarriage was a spontaneous abortion, and it shook me to my core right? It shook me because abortion is a word that I had throughout my life associated with the killing of a baby, right? Like that's that's how, how I, I don't want to say it's how I was raised. I don't think like my mom ever said that. That's just what I believed growing up. And it broke my heart a little bit to know that I had abortion written in my medical records, despite the fact that a spontaneous abortion is different than, I guess, you know, an elective abortion. But I regress. At my core, I do believe that I'm anti-abortion. I do. However, I am also very pro-choice. And I know that may seem like a bit of a contradiction, but I really believe that we should be focusing as much of our time and attention and resources towards preventing situations in which abortion becomes the percepted only option, right? So I really want to focus on some other things, but still allow women the right to choose. I feel like I have a respect for the fact that I can't possibly understand what somebody else is going through. And I just want to share a little bit of what I'm going through right now. So again, four daughters, um, and my last two pregnancies were were scary. I had some really significant medical concerns. Um, With my third pregnancy, I almost died due to kidney failure that went undiagnosed by my doctors. And then after a really, really long and difficult time with treatments during my pregnancy, I almost died while giving birth because I had a reaction to the epidural, which caused um, my blood pressure to drop. I coded on the table, and and it was scary, right? And then with my fourth pregnancy, I had the same issue with kidney failure, and I had a separate condition called cholestasis, where the risk is really to the baby, not not to the mother, but it was still a very traumatic experience. So given my kidney issues, kidney failure, um, at that time, after my, f- after my third baby, they misdiagnosed me. They said it was a med reaction. So with my fourth pregnancy, I was like, no problem. I won't take that med and this pregnancy will be fine. However, because the condition came back, I've been re-diagnosed. I have a genetic condition that causes this stuff to happen. And my doctor 
looked at me pretty point blank and said, you physically cannot have another baby. Like your life will not sustain through another baby because of this kidney failure issue. So we've done all the things that we can do to prevent having another baby, right? Like I'm not going to get too deep into that, but we've done, we've, we've done the things. And at my core, I know that the likelihood of me having a baby is slim to none because we've taken all of those proactive measures. However, there's still that fear, right? You hear those stories, nothing is 100%. And there's still that like super, super, super um, low chance that something may happen. And I've really had to come to terms with the fact that according to my doctors, if I got pregnant again, I would have to choose between ensuring that I'm okay for my family, my four girls and my husband, by terminating my pregnancy, by having an abortion. Or I could attempt to carry this baby to term, which might kill me and leave my four kids motherless, my husband widowed. And for me, it's not about the desire not to add a baby into my family. It's about my health, my wellness. And even Alabama's law does say that medical, you know, if there's like a significant risk to the mother that termination would be okay, like that would fall outside of the realm of the law. But it also makes me wonder who determines that medical standard, right? So when all that stuff happened, I was in another state and now I have a different doctor And what if my doctor now doesn't think the concerns are that bad? Or what if the doctor now thinks that medical advancements have come a long way in four years and I'd be fine? Or what if the doctor says, yes, you're right, we should do this. And then later on, some politician or lawyer or cop decides they were wrong. These are the thoughts that are going through my head that give me pause, that make me that make me worry, you know? I want to be able to make educated decisions for myself and for my family. I never want to be in the situation that I'm faced with making that decision. And I would just hate to have that decision be taken out of my hands. That is where my fear over this law comes into play. I really just wanted to share my one story with you. This isn't about Democrat versus Republican. It is not us versus them. Again, if you haven't checked out the book, I think you're wrong, but I'm listening. I highly recommend it. I really am enjoying reading it. I already feel like I'm going to have to go through it and listen to it again. I think you're wrong, but I'm listening. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Audible. The authors also have a podcast called Pantsuit Politics. You can check that out on iTunes or any of the podcasting platforms that you're currently listening on will likely carry Pantsuit Politics as well. And I want to thank you for spending some time with me today. Now, the Familypreneur community is our free Facebook group. We don't typically get super political in there, but I would love to invite you to go in there and find the post that is related to this week's episode. And if you have a story to share, I encourage you to post your story there. I don't want to get into heated debate, but I would like to share stories and feelings as they relate to this situation specifically. Again, you can join the group at familypreneurcommunity.com. And within that group, we have a ton of conversations related to entrepreneurial and family topics. Again, we're going to keep the political stuff tied to the one specific post and see how that goes. And I just want to thank you for listening to the end and giving me some trust and some space to share my experience, my message, and my concerns. And at this point, we will watch and see how the whole situation plays out. 
And of course, as we approach November, remember that voting is a way for you to influence these decisions going forward. It's so important to me, that right to vote. So I hope everybody registers now so that you are ready to go when the polls open in November. You'll find all of the links mentioned in this week's episode and the show notes at megbrunson.com slash 113. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today, and we will talk soon. Bye. Did you know that my mom has a Facebook page, Instagram account, YouTube channel, and more? Her username is The Meg Brunson. Just about everywhere. You should go follow her.